Anderson ticket, talking Mazda for the biggest. That's a comma and a comma and a comma. Gotta get it, get it. Anderson ticket, talking Mazda for the biggest. That's a comma. Disclaimer. As exciting as it was watching Shannon Newby ball out with comic book money, the truth is that this is fake. Even the money was fake. Don't believe everything you see on the internet. Can you make money selling independent comic books? Yes. Will you ball out like that? Probably not. But I can show you some things that will help you actually put some money in your pocket while creating your art. So first things first, and I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again, and I'm sure after I say it this time, I'm gonna say it another time after this. You have to do business like you have a business, and if you don't do business like you have a business, then you'll be out of business, not even realizing that you were in a business because you did not do business in a business fashion. So you have to treat this like a business. Now I know I've said that before, and I'm saying it again, because it really is that important. I have met people who do indie comic books, and some people have done some work that was like really, really great. I saw like a great indie book, a uh, really good art, um, uh, a really, really good story, and uh, they weren't doing really well with it. And then I met other people who kind of do like middle of the road type stuff, not great comic book art, not great story, and they're doing pretty well financially. And here's the thing, it's because the people who are doing well financially are treating it like it's a business. And I know as a creative person, um, that's not our, typically in most of our wheelhouse. You know, I think it's to sit in that quiet space and work and create and write and draw and then want to, you know, take that work and just say, here, put this out to the world. If you want to do this independently, then you have to have your own company. And if you have your own company, that means it's a business and you got to get out of your comfort zone and do business. And that, yes, I know for a lot of us, this is just not easy. A lot of us are introverted. I'm an introvert, believe it or not. Um, the person who you see right now in front of you being so uh, uh, expressive and talkative was not the person I was when I was a kid. And even in, in my quiet time outside of me doing this or interacting with the public, I'm still a quiet person who, who creates, you know, in, its, in, their, in their own little circle. But I said that if I want to make money at this and if I want to be free and create what I want to create, then you have to get out of your uh, comfort zone. So here's number two. You have to work. So, and I know that, and I know that if you created a comic book already, you're a worker. You've already worked because just the fact you did it, and most people are just talking about it, says that you have worked. But now you have to work beyond that. Here comes a side story. It's a little long, but it is uh, really important to understand this story because it will help you be successful. Watch it. Watch. Watch. Just, just watch. My first experience in selling my art as a product was the creation of my feature film I've, I've talked about before called Dirty Laundry, Air It Out. Yo, my man, you can't drink that in here. So again, it took five years. Out of that five years, it was a year of shooting, of getting the film shot, and a year of post-production. And when I finished the film, I had a lot of these low-budget, independent distributors um, saying that they, wouldn't, that they wanted to take my film and distribute it and put it out. But I had spent so much time on it and so much energy. Basically, I just gave my whole life into the creation of this film. And I saw the deals they were offering. The deals were so terrible. I was like, there's no way in the world I'm going to give this away. You know, and I knew it wasn't the greatest film I ever made, but it was my film. You know, that I made with my own hard-earned money, my own sweat and tears, you know, again, of, of killing myself for two years, working three jobs at a time to get this movie made. And for me, the pain of giving it away was because they make you feel like there's no other option. It's like either you sell it to us or you're going to be stuck with a movie that no one's ever going to see. But the pain of and the work that I put into getting that film made was so, um, so, so heavy on my heart. I could not give it away. I was—I knew going into distribution or making deals was a very um, hairy uh, situation. So I got recommended a book called, um, I remember I got it from, you know, Dove Simmons. Shout out to Dove Simmons. I took a seminar years ago. But he told me to read the, um, the, the feature film distribution deal by John W. Combs. And um, there's another one called Deal Making and Film and Television by Mark Litwack. I remember these books so clear because I read them like I had to fine tooth comb them because they're like they're, they're lawyers writing books. And you got to like really and not understanding lawyers speak. I had to really understand lawyers speak and go line by line. It took me the first reading the first chapter. It took me a week to go through the first chapter because I had to keep rereading it because I didn't understand the lawyer, those legal terms at that time. But eventually, as I kept reading, I figured it out. Right. So with that being said, when I finally um, when I got the first uh, offer contract from one of these low budget uh, urban distributors, when I went over it, I looked at it, I was like, 
This is like, if I took this deal, I at the end of the day, I would only get about five or $6,000 and I'll probably never see another penny after that. So I said, five or $6,000, I could sell it out of my trunk and make more money than that. And I said, hey, that's not a bad idea. Maybe I will do that. So I, that's what I did. So I got VHS copies made of my tape of the movie and I went out and started selling it on the street. I was going around, you know, I, I go out, but I had a big, um, got the trunk of my car and going around and selling my town to sell my tapes and then my car broke down so i got a big gym bag and put all my stuff into the gym bag and i get on the bus and go to different parts of the city of philadelphia and try to sell my tape you know selling it for ten dollars what about my movie you better get out of my face that really happened it was it was just me with vhs tapes walking the city of philadelphia trying to sell my movie the movie came out nationwide in 2003 but so from 2000 to 2003 i spent three years on the film festival circuit, going to independent stores, getting, I got into uh, Tower Records locally, and then I got, I, I, I hooked up with the uh, another ind company that does a distribution that allowed me to keep my rights, and that's how I got into Blockbusters Nationwide. But that was a three year process. You can say, and, and so it turned out to be a happy story at the end, but what I got out of it more than just the selling of the movie was the skills that I built by going through that process. And this is why this story pays off because it may not be easy for you in the beginning, but remember having a business, and if you're doing that, this is a marathon. You you know, you gotta be in it for the long haul. And if you wanna make a book and just sell a few copies, nothing wrong with that. But if you wanna be in it for the long haul, then you gotta put this time and effort in and you have to work. And if you do that, I promise you, if you put the work in and you work and you take some of the things that I'm showing you how to do, you will absolutely, absolutely be able to make money with your indie comic books. Number three. I have a dreaded word for you. I'm gonna scare the hell out of you. Sales. Sales. You have to do sales. <laughs> sales. You have to sell your book. You have to sell your book. You wanna make money, you got a product, you gotta sell it. Sales are hard. It's hard to be a salesperson. I had a job selling vacuum cleaners door to door. That lasted about a month and I said, the heck with this. So for most of us, doing sales is a hard thing, especially for us creative people. Going out there to be salespeople is not just something that, that naturally comes to a lot of us, uh, but it is something that is important to do. And moreover, here's the thing about it. You can learn how to do it. It is uncomfortable, but you can learn how to do it. It's not, it's outside of most of our wheelhouse, but you can learn how to do it. Again, believe it or not, I am not a sale, I was not a salesperson at all. I was not an extroverted person at all. I did not like talking to people at all. Uh, my, I remember this very clearly. My parents had friends over and I was like four. And um, I went and asked my mother something and one, uh, one of my mother's friends said, um, oh my gosh, he can talk? My mother was like, of course he can talk. Why can he, why wouldn't he be able to talk? So, Cause he never talks and I didn't. Because I just I didn't talk around people. They really thought something was like wrong with me that I couldn't talk. But I could talk perfectly well. I just didn't talk to people outside of my house. It just that's how I was. Capable of being verbally communicative, but did not communicate with people. Um, and that's where I was then. But here I am now, and I and I I sell. I talk. I present. I get up in front of people. I give speeches. Um, and again, that was not my natural inclination. But you can learn how to do it. If you want to learn to sell, I recommend. Uh, Jeffrey Gitterman, he has two books, the a Little Red Book of Selling. I read this one first, and then this is the Sales Bible. This is like the updated version of the Sales Bible. Uh, he wrote this one first and this one second, but I read this one first, and then I went back and got this one. So a lot of great tips on how to sell, uh, how to be a salesperson, how to sell ethically, not cheap people, good books. So I want to give you a couple techniques on how to sell your books. I see people at conventions. <laughs> And they're sitting at the table and the person will walk by and look at the table and the person, the, or the artist will sit, at the, sit behind the table, look at the person looking at their, their, their work and then the person will walk away and they will never say a word to them. I'll just go, ugh, dejected. And it, that, that drives me crazy and, and I'm screaming in my mind, talk to these people. They're here, they're looking at your work, talk to them. So very simply, if they come by, hi, how are you? How you doing today? Good. Oh, this is my comic book. It's called Munch. You know, and, and then you hand it to them. These are very common sales things. You, you put the product in the customer's hand, put it in their hand and tell them, look at it, check it out. And as they're flipping through it, you say, it's, I, I say, that's a story about Kentucky Fried Chicken being told from the viewpoint of the chicken. 
and I typically will get a laugh or a chuckle. Say they say Kentucky Fried Chicken, told from the viewpoint of the chicken. I was like, yeah, but moreover, it's really about uh, um, space aliens that come down to Earth and gather up people like they're almost like they're chicken, and they take them back to their planet um, and um, eat it and, and take us as food. And now that they found that the humans are so delicious, now you got ships coming down to Earth like on a regular basis, gathering up humans for food and taking them back to the planet. And um, basically turning humans into like a, like a um, chicken franchise is what they come to find out. And they say, really? Wow. It's like, well, yeah, here's the first um, graphic novel. There's the first three issues of the book right here. Here's my first, it's the thir first three issues. You know, I'll sign it for you. You want me to sign it for you? And again, I'm already offering to sign it before they even say they're going to buy it. I'll sign it for you. You want me to sign it for you? You'll have a, you'll have a, you'll have a, you'll have a signature copy. So it's like, you know, these are, and it's a very common Old sell, old school um, um, sales techniques. So that's the idea. You want to be personable, be present, um, be there, talk to them, communicate with them, make a connection. Don't just sit there and scroll on your phone, sitting behind the table while people just walk by and you don't sell books and you say, wow, you know, this doesn't work. People don't buy books. And sometimes you'll go through the whole process of this, try to sell your books. You know, you do everything you think you're supposed to do correctly. You tell your story. You put the product in their hands. You offer to sign it even before they say they're going to buy it, all that kind of stuff. And you won't sell anything. Don't get discouraged because you created a book yesterday and now you sold um, five to your friends and family the, the day one and then you don't sell anything day two. Remember, it took me three years of trying to sell a movie to a, national, to a nationwide audience. It took three years of my life. And again, if you want to make money at, in, in the indie comic book world, you got to be a part of it. You got to be ready for this marathon. So speaking of marathon, there's something that you do that's more important than you selling your book. And it's this your brand. Building your brand is more important than any individual book. So Munch is a brand. Snoopy Comics, my company, is a brand. And building those brands is more important than actually just selling a, a book. As I cultivate an audience for the things that I do, and I'm trying to make the best quality books I can make, and people see Snoopy Comics and say, oh, I like this. This was really good. Then what happens is when they see another Snoopy comic book, they'll say, oh, wow, I like the other book that I saw. Let me check this out. So when a Marvel movie comes out, people run and go see it because it's a Marvel movie. Us comic book geeks, we know Marvel. Most people, general audience, did not know who the Guardians of the Galaxies were, believe it or not, when the movie came out. They had no idea. They just saw it was a Marvel movie. And then people said it was a good Marvel movie, so people went and saw it because it was a Marvel movie. Marvel didn't expect Guardians of the Galaxy to do as well as it did. But because the brand of Marvel was so big, and the people, all the reviews were good, they say, well, if the reviews are good and it's a Marvel movie, I'll go and see it. And they did. And it, and it was, you know, knocking out of the park. It was, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. That was, that was one of the best franchises, one of the best brands in the MCU. You build your brand and you get a following of people who follow your brand. Now it's not just about selling books. It's selling t-shirts. It's selling merch. It's selling toys. Because once you build your brand, the value of everything you're doing in that brand rises. Early to bed, early to rise, work like a dog, and advertise. You have to market and advertise your, your books and market and advertise your brand. And this is coming from someone right now who's doing an absolutely terrible job marketing and advertising. Now, I think I come up with good advertising ideas and good marketing ideas, but as far as putting it out there on a daily basis, getting on my socials, doing all of the plugins, I mean, it's, it's a pain in the butt. So again, don't think that I don't know this is not a pain in the butt. I know it's a pain in the butt. So I know for a lot of people out here, you know, you have one floppy and, you, and you're watching this video and you may feel like, yo, this is, this is a mountain to climb. This is like climbing Mount Everest. So is this hard? Yes, but it's not Mount Everest hard. It's not, it's not doing heart surgery hard. So, but it is hard. And here's the thing to remember this. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And if you look around, everybody's not doing it. Why? Because it's, it's not easy. It's, it is hard. So I'm not going to discount that it's not hard to do because it's getting out of your comfort zone to do these things, but it's not impossible. And it's not hard to the level of, um, running a marathon a day hard. There was a guy who ran a marathon every day for 30 days or 50 days. I hadn't found my physical and mental limits. It, it just came into my head, 50, 50, 50. 50 Ironmans, 50 states in just 50 days. Meet the Iron Cowboy. And he's very tired, but you are fighting through it. They say he once wore a cowboy hat in the crowd of athletes, and the name stuck. It seemed pretty much impossible. And every state in the Union for 50 days straight. 
That's pretty damn hard. Every day, 50 days in a row. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, no, no. I'd rather sell comic books, thank you very much. So I'm gonna do a deeper dive on all these subjects just like I did on this video about how to write a comic book script. I'm gonna do a deeper vibe, deeper dive on all of the things I've just talked about. Selling your book, um, price points, uh, getting your book into stores, all of that stuff. I'm gonna actually go do deep dives on all those subjects just like I did with the, um, the uh, writing a script video. So got a lot more coming. Love you guys, peace.